Welcome back to the One of the Family podcast by Blue Circle Cement. On today's episode, we're joined by Sam, who's known for his Instagram page, DIY with Sam, to talk all things about tools. From how to start your collection to what's the very best brand out there for power and hand tools. Also, on this episode, there's a hidden question. All you have to do is submit your answer to the question via the landing page, like below, to win a Milwaukee drill set. We hope you enjoy the episode and keep an eye out for the question. So hi Sam, thanks for coming on the One of the Family podcast. Hi, uh, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Just managed to get my hair cut. <laughs> the Welsh lockdown opening, so we're all happy. Yeah, you're very lucky. I need my roots done. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so your page, your Instagram page, DIY with Sam, is all for people who love tools and DIY. Um, how did you start your page? Um, so I actually started it during the first lockdown. Um, I just like renovated my mum's garden and um, done a bunch of stuff down there, um, leveled it all out down the back, got rid of a bunch of overgrown stuff that was there. and. Um, I think it was my my brother and sister were like, you should just set up a page for this because it's something you enjoy doing. And it's something I've always sort of done, but I've never sort of thought to record, photograph or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's what sort of got it got it started, to be honest. Yeah, so it kind of just started from doing like a home project. Um, yeah. Is that kind of like where your love for like buying and collecting tools came from as well? Sorry, what was that? <laughs> Sorry. Um, is that where like your love for buying and collecting tools came from? Oh, uh, um, so I think like being younger, I used to see my um uncle had some DeWalt, sorry about that. My uncle had some cordless DeWalt power tools. Um he had um a combi drill. And I think um that's what got me sort of into the whole tool thing. Um seeing his tools and sort of wanted to start my own collection. Well, obviously, when you're younger, you can't really afford it. And as you grow up, um, just a bit more disposable income, which I could put towards tools. So, yeah, that's how I started my collection. Yeah. What was your first ever tool you bought? Um, it was actually a Bosch green jigsaw, um, which I still use now. Um, I've been tempted to get the... Uh, cordless DeWalt one for a while but um I think like the Bosch Green one works really well um Bosch Green gets like slated quite a bit for being the sort of cheaper version of the Bosch brand but um for me I found it's a really good tool does everything I need to do so I don't see the need to sort of change it at this point yeah and would you recommend like the Bosch Green collection like to people maybe that are starting out and buying their first set of tools so I think it's a great sort of range to start on, yeah. Um, as I said, I've, I've still run the Bosch Green Jigsaw and the Bosch Green Angle Grinder, and those are both corded tools. So you obviously don't have the batteries where you then have to keep a set of working batteries to go in those. Um, but I'd also say if you can afford to go for a bit more of a premium brand, um, then I, I would recommend that. Yeah, Um and what other brands do you currently use in like, your collection? Uh, so I've sort of got onto the DeWalt 18 volt battery platform. And I think now that I'm on that, most of the tools I've bought have been DeWalt just because it's so expensive to then rebuy the batteries in another brand and rebuy the chargers um, that you sort of end up pigeonholed into one brand. So that's sort of happened to me at the moment. And so far, I haven't really come across any um, DeWalt 18 volt tools, which I think are like particularly bad that I wouldn't want to use. So um, yeah, that's a big thing, like researching the tools beforehand. I probably spend weeks looking online at different reviews, different tool options, different brands before deciding what I'm going to buy um, and then take the plunge. Yeah. Where do you like read the reviews? Um, where do you do like your research? Um, so a lot of it is YouTube, to be honest, YouTube and Instagram. And I mean, I've got um, a bunch of friends who are actual tradespeople. So I'm not a tradesperson. I'm literally just 
a DIYer, um, just enjoy doing this thing, sort of stuff in my spare time more than anything. Um, but I think speaking to tradespeople on sort of Instagram and stuff, they'll recommend sort of different tools. And um, yeah, you can get a really good insight into what's good and what's bad from them because they're using them on a daily basis. They've used numerous different brands and they actually um, can say this is better for this reason. So I think that's always my starting point is sort of asking um, my sort of friends on Instagram what their thoughts are. And then I'll take the sort of products they recommend and then have a look at reviews on YouTube um, and Instagram and try and work out what would be best for me. Um, because sometimes like what they'll recommend is overkill for me because, like I said, I'm just doing odd projects here and there. And yeah. Yeah, definitely. Do you think that's something like maybe keen DIYers, they probably don't need to spend as much money as trades, people that use them every day? Or do you think it is kind of worth the investment? Um, so I think for me, I've never sort of regretted going for a more expensive tool um, just because if you've got something that does everything you want to do and can do more if you need it to, then that's great. Whereas um, if you end up buying something which is slightly cheaper or so, sort of doesn't do as much, um, you can end up in trouble and think, actually, I now need to get this tool so that I can get this job done. Um, but there are some brands out there, like I know Ryobi gets uh, quite a bit of bad press for being a DIY brand, but some of the tools they're churning out look really good. So I don't see why you wouldn't go and sort of spend a lot less money on those if you're using them once in a blue moon and they do everything you need to do, um, as opposed to going for a sort of their premium version of the brand and spending a lot more money. Yeah. What do you think about like the whole debate online? Like people are either DeWalt or Milwaukee on like other brands maybe get like a bad rap. What do you think? Like the is there much misconceptions out there? Yeah, so I think um a lot of people think I'm a solid DeWalt fan and I am, but that goes back to the whole battery thing again. Once you're on a platform, it's hard to it's hard to sort of justify buying batteries for another brand when you're just doing doing DIY sort of work. I mean, tradespeople can justify it because they're using them all the time. Some of them have like three or four drills um, and they can buy those in different brands. They have different tools for different jobs and that's great once you can justify it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not um, sort of pigeonholed into any brand. I wouldn't say DeWalt tools are better than Milwaukee or Milwaukee are better than DeWalt. I'd say each individual brand has better tools and worse tools. Sort of like um, I've actually got the DeWalt 18 volt router which I've brought with me. So um, looking through the reviews, this is the sort of best router I found in the 18 volt range, quarter inch. Um, and I think that's the best router that you can get, DeWalt, Milwaukee, or anything else. Um, but there are certain brands which are known to make specific tools which are a lot better so like milwaukee make i don't know let's cut that bit out <laughs> yeah okay uh, yeah, i can't i can't even think of what they make because i don't really use them yeah them. So, no you okay um what essential tools for our diyer would you say what are the essential tools for a diyer um so i think a combi drill um, just because of how much you need it. Like everyone knows that drills are the sort of go-to DIY tool, aren't they? Um, so I'd say, yeah, probably a combi drill and an impact driver, just because impact drivers make really light work um, of tasks. So Sam, is there any other accounts like on Instagram which inspire you or you'd really recommend other people to follow? Um, so there are actually quite a few. Um, I think Alex Dodman, he's um, quite a big DIYer and he's part of the reason I started my account as well. I followed him for quite a while. He started off doing sort of food stuff and now he's moved more into tools and DIY. Um, but yeah, some of the stuff he built is incredible. He's like building a swimming pool in his back garden at the moment. Um, he's been building it for a year 
<laughs> he is built here. So yeah, he's a great one. And then one I follow who gives a lot of tips and advice is Luke Sparky. So he's an electrician by trade, but he gives tips which are sort of useful for anyone really. Um, so like just today, he was showing how to get around taking out a nail when you've got a floorboard down using a plug cutter, which isn't something I think many people do. It's a really clever way of doing it. So yeah, he's another one I definitely say is worth following. One of them posts uh, a lot of tool stuff. So R. Davis Electrical posts a lot of tool photos. So if you want to sort of drool over different tool pictures, uh, he's a great one to follow as well. Probably uh, not good if you're trying to save money, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think he's good for anyone's wallet, to be honest. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's got a lot to answer for, that guy. So, yeah. <laughs> Have you got um, any advice on how to like, build up your tool collection? Um, so I would say like start slowly and then research. And then Facebook Marketplace has been quite cool. You can um, sort of set reminders for specific things on there. So I've got DeWalt as a a save thing on there. So if anything, DeWalt pops up on Facebook Marketplace, it notifies me that DeWalt is for sale. Um, So I've seen quite a few cool things going quite cheap. And if you get in there sort of quick, you can pick them up um, quite cheaply. So that's quite useful. And then I'd say as well, there's certain places that do some really good sales. So FFX on eBay do a 20% off sale with a Nectar card every now and again. Um, And yeah, you can get some really good deals on there because I don't think they push up the prices beforehand to then discount them 20%. It's it's a genuine 20% off thing that eBay offers. So yeah. Yeah. uh, do you like any um have you got any reservations of like buying off Facebook marketplace or any advice on like how to make sure you're getting stuff on that genuine? Um so I've I've seen a few things on there, like people posting 20 volt 20 volt version tools for DeWalt, which are actually American tools on that. And um <clears throat> they'll ask you for a deposit. So I think if anyone asks you for a deposit on Facebook Marketplace, it's probably too good to be true. And if it does sound too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Um, So I think just do your research on the tool. Is it a British manufactured tool? Um, Is is the price reasonable? Because nobody's going to sell you a a £300 drill for £20, which looks two or three months old. So yeah, just be wary of those things and um, don't accept anyone posting you anything because they may not post it. Um, Yeah, just to be basically vigilant whilst Mm -hmm. buying on there. That's my advice. And do you buy much of like your tools second hand or are they all brand new? Um, So... There's a couple that I have picked up secondhand just because they were really good deals. And I know I just said, um, <laughs> well, if, if I'm it's true. <laughs> yeah. 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 But um, no, I, I have got quite lucky with a couple of tools. But um, I also do like buying them brand new just because of the warranties that come with them. And you know that nobody's been chucking them about and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think a lot of the stuff at the moment I've seen on Facebook Marketplace tends to be tradespeople's secondhand stuff. And it'll say that it's two or three months old on there, and it probably is, but um, on a work site, it gets bashed around so much that by the time you get it, it's probably the same as having a five-year-old tool if someone else had used it. Um, Sam, is there any tools you'd recommend for, like, say, a tradesperson or someone that like uses tools maybe like quite regularly, like any life changing ones? Um, so, I think the one I'd have to recommend would probably be a multi tool. So, I think, yeah, I must have bought mine around a year ago now, and the number of times it sort of got me out of trouble since I've bought it is paid for itself because there's stuff a multi tool can do that you sort of can't do with any other tool um, or would take a lot longer with another tool. So 
yeah, I think multi-tool would have to be my recommendation of go-to tool to change your life. Yeah. And is it a Duat one you have? Yes, the Duat one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shocking. I feel like, uh, I feel like a Duat fanboy now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. As part of our One of the Family podcast giveaway series, we're giving away a Milwaukee dress set worth £250. To answer all you have to do is answer the following question. What Blue Circle product is recommended for laying slabs? Submit your answer to the question via the landing page link below to win. And in terms of icon tools, is there any particular brands which stand out to you or is there any particular best icon tools you would recommend? So I started buying Wira tools last year and um, yeah, that sort of spiraled out of control too. So I've got a bit of a Wira tool addiction now as well. Um, and I'd probably say my favorite tool or most used tool of their brand is their Tool Check Plus, which is like a ratchet and driver set all in one with like numerous bits. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend that mm. really good uh, as well. Yeah. Is there any brands you think which are like quite underrated? Um, I think Bosch Pro, they've not got the best name for themselves and they seem to market themselves a lot more than any other tool brand I've seen on social media. But um, as far as I'm aware, they're like quite good tools. Um, I know people seem to love Milwaukee, Makita and DeWalt as well. But Bosch is probably, you know, a big brand which should be up there with them. And they're quite innovative as well. So like they came up with Starlock on multi-tools, which is a way of getting the blade off a lot quicker. Um, and Makita's just picked up on that as well. Um, so yeah, there are a few things I've seen Bosch come out with where I'm like, they're pouring money into their like research and development and stuff. So yeah, I'd probably say Bosch Pro is quite underrated. Mm. And do you think like, um, obviously product development's quite important and staying ahead of like the other brands, but do you think like in terms of like marketing, like the way brands um, position themselves like in social media and stuff like that plays an impact, like a role into what you purchase? So I think that is um, a massive part of it, to be honest. Um, somebody said this the other day, and I can't remember who it was, but it was to do with, would we be buying what we're buying if nobody else saw us buying it? <laughs> mm. I think that's like a really good little phrase because I think a lot of people just go, oh, everyone else is buying Milwaukee or DeWalt or whatever, so I need to buy that. But there's some great accounts out there who are doing incredible work, like Alex Dodman again. He's doing some crazy stuff. And if you look at his tools, he's using like Screwfix's McAllister brand and, you know, all budget DIY brands, which get the job done really well, don't sort of impact the quality of his work at all. Um, and he hasn't had to fork out an arm and leg for them either. So, yeah. Yeah. So definitely just don't buy it for the sake of like the name of the brand. Yeah, definitely. Is there any lessons you've learned from buying tools that you would like give other people? I, w I wouldn't say go, go for the more expensive tools, but if there is a small price difference in tools, have a look at the specifications of the two, compare them, check if there's anything that the sort of more expensive one does that the other one doesn't, um, and then take the plunge. There's also a lot about um, a lot of brushless and brush tools around. So with the brush tools, you have to sort of change the brushes within the sort of internal working parts of the tool every now and again. So they've got like a finite lifetime on them. So if you can go brushless as well, um, do that because they generate less heat, um, they last longer, and ge generally they work slightly better as well. So, yeah, that's really good advice. Um, what was your most expensive tool, and was it actually worth it? Um, so, <laughs> this is my most expensive tool, uh, my most expensive power tool. Anyway, it's the. DeWalt 18 volt brushless router. 
And yeah, it was definitely worth it. Um, I think that was around £300 without the batteries. Um, they're actually more expensive than that now just because there's stock issues with DeWalt in the UK. So like, not many of the manufacturers have them. Um, yeah, they're like gold dust, I think. So yeah, I'd say it's definitely worth it just because it's such a versatile tool. Um, yeah, to be honest, I normally try and make sure I've got a project lined up to justify the tool that I buy. But with this, um, I was going to buy it months back and it was out of stock. Um, didn't have anything lined up to do with it. And then all of a sudden it came back in stock and I just thought I'm having it sort of thing. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely, especially if it's hard to get hold off. Impulse buy. <laughs> And um, what's probably maybe your then your biggest regret, like in anything you've purchased, or have you ever had a regret with like a certain brand that you've ever bought? Um, well, to be honest, I think I've been quite lucky with the tools I've bought. Um, there are a couple of brands, and I won't go into like any specific names or anything, where I've actually taken the tool back because I just thought it was too flimsy and too gimmicky um but yeah um i think like when you get onto the sort of more premium power tool side of things like dewalt milwaukee bosch pro um you're in a safe sort of zone there anyway so mm. so you would definitely probably recommend sticking to the well-known kind of brands yeah, like I say, if you're a DIYer, I think Ryobi is a great brand um, and those sorts of DIY specific brands are great because you can get a lot out of them and pay maybe a third of the price as you would for something like um, the DeWalt equivalent. But um, yeah, if you can stretch towards something a bit more premium, it just like secures how long it'll last. So, mm. um, What's probably like on your list for your next purchase? or probably the brushless planer. I've wanted a planer for a while. And then um, I had a bunch of doors to um, plane down just before Christmas. I had six doors I had to plane down. And somebody on uh, Instagram actually convinced me to just stick to a hand plane because it was only six. I'd probably done around two of them and then regretted not just buying the electric planer. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so much more work. but. Uh, yeah yeah that's probably, probably your next one probably the planer yeah yeah and like as you said like you're a keen DIYer um is it something like you think this can this hobby will continue and um, like purchasing all the tools and um, even if you maybe don't have as many projects lined up um so I always tend to have projects lined up it's just finding the time to actually do them like um with uni at the moment and soon it'll be work uh, that eats up so much time that um yeah it's just a struggle to get everything everything done fitted in but um yeah i think i, I will carry on buying the tools <laughs> i'm yeah. it's, it's sort of an addiction really isn't it <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's more yeah. Than hobby, i think yeah probably at this stage definitely yeah. how many like how how large is your collection now um so in terms of power tools i've probably got eight, eight different power tools um and then in terms of hand tools it's just a little bit ridiculous to be honest so yeah i, I couldn't really quantify it but it's it's getting there like um it's it's probably on par with a tradesperson, even though it doesn't need to be. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, and like your Instagram page, I think you have like over five thousand followers on it now. How did, was it the first lockdown that your followers kind of grew in the page? Grew yeah. Up? So um, I think I've been like really lucky with Instagram, to be honest. Um, like the reach I've had on some of my posts on there has been quite decent. But um, I think a lot of it with Instagram and sort of other social media platforms is that they are all social media platforms. So it's all about like 
communicating with other people and like talking to people on different accounts and stuff like that. And I feel like that somehow seems to encourage growth on there. So I wouldn't say I've done anything spectacular, but I do sort of interact with a lot of people on there. And I think that's helped more than anything. So mm, definitely. Do you find like a lot of people come to you like asking for advice now and like what to buy? Um, so yeah, I have had quite a few messages about um, different tools and stuff like that. But similarly, if I see someone with a tool that I'm thinking of buying, I'll drop them a message and say, what do you think about that tool? Are there any drawbacks? Are there any like advantages or disadvantages? Do you regret it? And I think, um, I yeah, I've started to get a lot of those same messages. And the other sort of bits of advice I get tend to be specific to the stuff that I build. So uh, I think someone messaged me last night asking about that little uh, table and chair set that I'd made for my niece the other day. So I've got to send him some plans of how to make one of those. Um, yeah, so that tends to be what people ask me on there anyway. Yeah, it's great that you can like share advice and stuff. What would you say maybe, what tool have you got or like what review have you done that probably got like the best uh, or maybe the most amount of like questions about it? Um, tool or review? Um, I think there have been quite a few questions about the router just because it's not your sort of standard tool. Um, it's something that is a little bit more premium. It's like a carpenter's tool more than anything. So, um, yeah, I've probably had quite a bit, quite a few questions about that. And I think everyone already knows these are like incredible because when I was thinking about buying them, everyone was sort of saying, yeah, go for it. That is the one to get. Yeah. Um, and where, where do you see like your DIY page going like in the future? Is it like something you'll definitely continue doing? Because I know you probably have plans to like start um, YouTube and you do a bit of TikTok as well. Yeah. So I think I'll definitely stick with the Instagram just because, like I said, it, it seems to be more of a community feel on there than anything. So I've made friends with so many people on there. Um, to the extent I'm even in like a few group chats with these these guys and girls and yeah it's it's great on there so I'll definitely be carrying on with the account um, and have you got you've got the ambitions to go and start a YouTube channel so I started a YouTube a while back um, and I've just been sort of popping odd bits of content on there more than anything basically like duplicating my Instagram reviews on there um, but I have been getting questions if, you know, when I do a little build, like the other day I did those planters, um, I do get some questions asking if I could put up a, a full sort of tutorial on it on YouTube. So I think I'm going to start trying to do that on YouTube as opposed to Instagram so that there's different content on different platforms. Yeah. yeah. And how have you found TikTok so far? <laughs> So TikTok's an interesting one. I think there's a lot of angry people on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, probably. It seems to be like um, there's a whole other generation. I know I'm, I'm sounding now like I'm old and I'm not. <laughs> it seems to be like a generation thing where it's a much younger crowd on TikTok, I think. Um, luckily, I've not really had much abuse or anything at all on there. It's been quite quite cool, really. Um, and I find that things reach a lot more people on there as well. So um, I think I started that at Christmas, and yeah, it's just hit 14,000 followers on there. So um, it's a lot quicker than Instagram, I think. Instagram's a more sort of long-term, slower growth thing. Yeah, definitely 100%. Um, so what's your um, your page on um, Instagram is DIY with Sam, isn't it? If anyone wants to follow you. That's right, at DIY with Sam. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sam, for joining us today in the podcast. Thank you.